Hello and welcome to Multiframe Webinar 3, Video 3 on Working with Loads. We've seen how we can apply joint and member loads. Now let's take a look at another type of member load, which is a thermal load. This is a thermal load or temperature load, which can be varying through the depth of the member, or it can be constant through the depth of the member. If we do apply a varying load where we have a different top temperature to the bottom temperature so that we have a thermal profile through the member, then it is important that we enter in a depth. And note that that depth is the depth of the temperature gradient. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same as the depth of the member, although commonly it will be the same. The temperatures that we enter are relative to ambient temperature, so a positive temperature will result in expansion of the member and a negative temperature, a contraction. And we have to enter in the thermal coefficient of the material of the member. The properties of that coefficient, or at least the units of that coefficient, are in microstrain per degree. So that is the amount of strain times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius or per degree Fahrenheit, depending on your unit settings. Uh, of course, you can also use thermal loads to simulate a preload. If you put in a negative load uh, temperature, it will result in some shrinkage of the member to simulate a pretension. So let's see how that's done in multi-frame. If we go over to the multi-frame model, we can select a member and from the load menu, choose thermal load. So if we're putting in a constant thermal expansion, we can put in top and bottom temperature constant above ambient, the thermal coefficient, and then the depth of the thermal gradient. Notice that it's actually possible to have that thermal uh, gradient uh, through the depth of the web or across the flange. So for this one, because uh, my top and bottom are the same, that will have no effect. Uh, I just need to put in those values. But if I put in a gradient, so if I choose a member and I put a different top and bottom temperature relative to ambient and a depth of that, then in this case those uh, radio buttons will take effect. So that would be a thermal gradient between the top and bottom flange and that would be a thermal gradient across the width of the member. So applying member loads that uh, simulate thermal expansion or contraction effects is very straightforward. Uh, just use the thermal load command from the load menu and choose a constant or a variable temperature gradient. Thank you for watching.